a very warm, perhaps a rather too warm, welcome to Christchurch on this hot evening, whether you are here with us in the cathedral or joining us online on Friday when perhaps it will be cooler, we can only hope. It's a particular pleasure to hear the girl choristers of Friedswide Voices uh, singing Evensong this evening. They do every Wednesday in term time, but very rarely without um, adult altos, tenors and basses. So it's lovely to be able to hear all the girls, including the probationers, and they can really show us what, uh, what wonderful things they can do. The music this evening has a distinctly Oxford flavour with the uh, Canticles by Robert Quinney, uh, organist at New College, and the uh, anthem by Howard Goodall, formerly of this house. You can follow the order of service in your Evensong booklet. We're currently halfway down page three and the service continues with the psalm appointed for this evening, which is a portion from the end of Psalm 119, verses 145 to 160.
Now the Lord is about to lay waste and the earth and make it desolate, and he will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the slave, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the creditor, so with the debtor. The earth shall be utterly laid waste and utterly despoiled, for the Lord has spoken his word. The earth dries up and withers, the world languishes and withers, the heavens languish together with the earth. The earth lies polluted under its inhabitants, for they have transgressed laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant, therefore a curse devours the earth, and its inhabitants suffer for their guilt. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth dwindled, and few people are left. The wine dries up, the vine languishes, all the merry-hearted sigh. The mirth of the timbrels is stilled, the noise of the jubilant has ceased. The mirth of the lyre is stilled. No longer do they drink wine with singing. Strong drink is better to those who drink it. The city of chaos is broken down. Every house is shut up so that no one can enter. There is an outcry in the streets for lack of wine. All joy has reached its eventide. The gladness of the earth is banished. Desolation is left in the city. The gates are battered into ruins. For thus it shall be on the earth and among the, the nations. As when an olive tree is beaten, as at the gleaning when the grape harvest is ended, they lift, they lift up their voices, they sing for joy. They shout from the west over the majesty of the Lord. Therefore in the east give glory to the Lord. In the coastlines of the sea glorify the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. Here ends the first lesson.
The first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the sixth chapter, beginning at the first verse. When any of you has a grievance against another, do you dare to take it to court before the unrighteous instead of taking it before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels, to say nothing of ordinary matters? If you have ordinary cases then, do you appoint as judges those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to decide between one believer and another? But if a believer goes to court against a believer, and before unbelievers at that. In fact, to have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather be wronged? Why not rather be defrauded? But if you yourselves wrong and defraud, and believers at that, do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. None of them will inherit the kingdom of God. And this is what some of you used to be. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. Here ends the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel as our prayers continue.
This evening's anthem by Howard Goodall sets a hymn text by Charles Wesley, the well-known hymn, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, Joy of Heaven to Earth Come Down.
Give us grace, Almighty Father, to address you with all our hearts, as well as with our lips. You are everywhere present. From you, no secrets can be hidden. Teach us to fix our thoughts on you, reverently and with love, so that our prayers are not in vain, but are acceptable to you now and always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In our first lesson, Isaiah described God's judgment and desolation, and yet the joyful rejoicing of the people, giving glory to the, maj of, to the majesty of his name for their deliverance. Let us pray that we might acknowledge our faults and failings which deserve condemnation and rejoice in God's mercy. We humbly beseech you, O Father, mercifully to look upon our infirmities and for the glory of your name, turn from us all those evils that we most righteously have deserved. And grant that in all our troubles, we may put our whole trust and confidence in your mercy and evermore serve you in holiness and pureness of living to your honour and glory. To our only mediator and advocate, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul admonished those who were seeking to bring others to justice to recognise their own wrongdoings and acknowledge that the true source of justification comes only from being washed and sanctified in the name of Christ. Let us pray for the Church, and especially in this diocese for the Church of Shaw come Donington, as it continues Christ's saving work. Grant, O Lord, that this mind may be in us, which was also in Jesus Christ, who left the heaven of your holiness and of your glory, that he might take upon him our sins and our sorrows, to seek and save that which was lost. Stir the hearts of your people, that they may multiply their labours in the cause of charity and love, that they may minister to the wants of others, and by their good works may lead many to glorify you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, we pray for God's peace in our hearts this night. Give me this night, O Father, the peace of mind which is truly rest. Take from me all envy of anyone else, all resentment for anything which has been withheld from me, all bitterness against anyone who has hurt or wronged me, all anger against the apparent injustices of life, all foolish worry about the future, and all futile regret about the past. Help me to be at peace with myself, at peace with my fellow human beings, at peace with you, so that I may lay myself down to rest in peace, through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Let us join our prayers with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Frideswide and all the saints, saying together the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen.